I've used almost every video editing software under the sun, trying to find alternatives to Premiere Pro that will take my videos to the next level. I want to find a software that's going to push me to my limits and squeeze out diamonds from these greasy editing hands. I was watching Interstellar for the 27th time the other day when I asked Jack, who edited this? Lee Smith. Yeah, but, but what on? Avid Media Composer. Avid Media Composer. An editing titan in the TV and film industry. Surely there is a treasure to uncover here. Something that us YouTubers are missing. To put Avid to the test, I'm gonna to have to make something that requires me to do green screening, masking, animating, and more. And I've got the perfect idea for this. A few years ago, I made a video called Detective Finn. It was one of the most technically challenging videos I've ever made. And I'm gonna make a sequel using just Avid. We kicked things off with recording our little short film and getting all the footage together. Because this was all very stylized, like a 50s noir thriller, we had a lot of fun filming and had a lot of space to get creative. You could have Detective Finn here. And because I was supposedly using the world's toughest video editing software, I wanted to make sure that I included some proper challenges to edit like shots with two me's in it and loads of green screening. Oh, that's simple enough, I guess. And with all that done, let's download Avid. Downloading Avid was the first of the challenges I had to face with this software. Yes, that's right. Not only using it was tough, but downloading it was like taking my A-levels all over again. I gotta take all the boxes. I, I danced a couple times, right? Logger. I've done some logging in the past. Here it is, ultimate trial. Once again, everything's ultimate this, ultimate that in, in the editing world. Just like my presets, the ultimate bundle, the ultimate mega bundle. Plus, just like my presets. And after going through all of the questions, ticking all of the boxes, I finally had it on download. Now I must have been in some kind of mood today because I just couldn't keep still or be quiet. Look at this belt, look at this belt. I made that, whoops, whoops. Yeah, we're about quarter of the way through the download, so. I was clearly just so excited to use Avid. Let's see what all the fuss is about. Oh, Avid Media Composer quit unexpectedly. This is a good start. It's the first time you open the software that it crashes. You guys remember Flame? Hell yeah. And finally, I was into Avid. I've always wanted to edit. A movie on movie software. We're in, this is the first look at the whole timeline. Now, first things first. This thing did indeed look like an editing software. So we get a big green tick of approval for this. It also had a whole load of different workspaces. Oh, we got edit, color, effects, audio. Now let's drag and drop the detective fin folder with all the footage on it. Dragging and dropping footage into a project has been and still is one of my most important deciding factors when it comes to knowing how easy a software is gonna to be to use. In my free softwares video, I did this with all eight softwares and most of them passed. Avid, however, slapped me in the face with a big fat nope and then required me to spoon feed it directly through the software itself. So I click import media like any unsuspecting editor would and then selected all of my lovely filmed footage, unaware that I just started duplicating my files and filled up my Mac completely. Yeah, my Mac just ran out of memory. Damn. That's right. My MacBook's memory had completely maxed out, which meant I had some figuring out to do. And after one very helpful tutorial, I figured out the issue. It was time to start fresh and begin editing on Avid for reals this time. All right, let's make some movies. And so finally, I began learning Avid, and immediately I was thrown into a dark corner and shouted at for having ever used any easy software in my life. Let me save you a whole day's worth of me complaining and struggling by giving you a quick list of all the problems I faced. You can't delete folders. Once you make a folder, you can't delete it. I guess that folder's just staying there because you can't delete folders. Undoing stuff? I don't know what you're talking about. You can't undo on, on this. The color spaces are an absolute minefield. Uh, and even though I thought I'd fix that. Right click, come down here to where it says display color space. And we have the same. I was actually just delaying the inevitable. Lots of this noise and masking. I don't even know where to start with this. So just watch this clip. Okay, what if I wanted to mask? Okay, now it's flipped it back around. Go ahead. And... <laughs> <laughs> Clips rotate all over the place without an obvious reason. What? Why does it keep spinning? What's going on? Every time I <laughs> can you see this? Great. Oh, that key that that really worked. Oh, it did. 
Yeah! Planning. Now I know this is a weird one, and it's kind of my own fault, but there is a definite bar of standards that needs to be met when using this software, especially when recording footage, lighting green screens, and audio quality. Uh, I don't think we lit the green screen well enough. Because that is what this software is made to use. It's not gonna magically fix your shitty green screen like Premiere would. User experience on this thing is, well, probably the most damning part of the software. For the whole day, I was wrestling with what did what and learning how to do what should be super easy tasks. This is watching the clip live. I press this button here, it takes me to the effects panel. It changes all of the effects that I've made, but you can't see it live because f you. Not to mention the absolute masses of editing jargon that not even I could understand. Go to the timeline fast menu, hamburger menu. What the f is the hamburger menu. Or well, the keyframes that just made themselves. Why am I keyframing? Look at all those. They're all keyframes. I didn't put them there. I didn't tell you to keyframe that. How could I forget the timeline? Welcome to the kitchen. This is where I'm gonna do all of my cutting up. The timeline was atrocious and hard to use. With three different handles that all do different things on each end of the clip, it's a lot. I'm gonna make something out of this. Even if it's shit, I'm making something. Bear in mind, this is just day one. This is me and Avid sizing each other up, having a little tussle and ironing out our issues. Like any good relationship, it's a teething process. And I'm praying to the editing gods that me and Avid can have a beautiful life together. Now let's talk about the good parts. That's better. That's more like it. Did you fuck? All of which can be summarized into one singular point, tutorials. Because Avid is in the hands of many, many editors like ourselves, this means that there are thousands of tutorials for every single thing that I needed to know. Oh, it did it, and it, it, did, it did the thing that I wanted it to do. Where like, flame wouldn't do it, you know? You mem remember? Hi, A regular occurrence in my hunt for the answers would be that I would then be presented with more things that needed tutorials to understand. It was a constant loop that never ended. There were moments of pure euphoria as I discovered what Shift and L did. Shift and L, Shift and L. Yes! Shift L, hell yeah. I wish I could see some audio waveforms. And then when I started to get used to where things were, like this hamburger menu. The hamburger, audio data, waveform. It all started to click. Now we're getting there. Now we're finally starting to get to the point where it resembles a useful editing software. Day two arrives, and with it, some epic scenery with an epic soundtrack. So listen, yesterday may not have been a massive success in terms of how much I edited. In fact, this is all I have done at this stage, so yeah, I mean, it, it's a timeline. It's a timeline. Today, I was going to knuckle down, settle in, and get the grind switched on. All of those mistakes I made yesterday finally starting to come together and form an understanding of how I could use this software to edit the most epic short film in, in the world. world. I was recording myself in the evening, doing some good chopping on the timeline, laying down the whole thing, and I sh** you not, after I got up to turn the camera off, this happened. This is the report. I don't know what any of that means. What does that mean? Does not, does not match crashing frame. What? Avid decided to teach me a lesson, which I'd forgotten in the moment. Always save your work. So the worst thing that could possibly happen has happened. Uh, I got a crash. It didn't just crash. It took the last three hours of my editing progress with it. If anyone working at Avid is listening, if it's not already in there, if I've missed it completely, put in an auto save feature. Just, just a wild idea that might, you know, might help the film industry as well, maybe. On day three, I was determined to get this video done. Even though it had crashed and I had lost three hours of work, I was just grateful I still had my timeline progress from day one. I started with getting the voice of Detective Finn down, recording directly into my Mac. They say I'm a rogue agent, that I can't be trusted. They say I'm a rogue agent, that I can't be trusted. It worked. I was getting on relatively well with Avid today, using that hamburger menu, shift and L, and discovering new shortcuts that helped me speed up my workflow. And I gotta say, the more that I'm using this software, the more I am starting to get used to all of the little quirks that it has. Um, it is a pretty brutal software. It's pretty brutal. There's, there's no ease of use, really. It's just like 
make a decision, do it. Kind of hope that it works because you're not going to get much playroom to like make it look nice and fine tune it, which is annoying. Even something as tiny as cutting up a clip was hidden behind menus and on-screen buttons. I need to figure out how to split a clip. No blade tools, no splitting clip shortcuts. There it is. Oh, did I do it? I did it! I did it! I cut a clip! Yeah! Amidst my day of blazing through the edit, I discovered a hidden gem within the Avid community. I also found a whole list of tutorials compiled by this dude who's on the Avid forum. It literally with everything on it, so I bookmarked that. I'm not kidding, there is absolutely everything within this one post. So thank you to that unsung champion. Not all Hollywood heroes wear capes, but today, this nice. one does. With all those editing techniques out of the way, I could really start focusing on what the video needed to be artistically. It needs to feel like a like a 50s noir film. Me and Jack did a lot of watching old black and white films. And one of the most important things that we wanted to nail was the line delivery and the timing of the edits. You think too much. Now stop thinking and listen. I got a case for you, detective. Similar to that of a Kirk Douglas movie, with all of the right spaces to leave room for suspense. Look, you identified one of these men from a photo, now point them out or I'll throw you in the clink. You'll do what? That's enough. This ended up being quite funny with the L.A. Noir music, which was the next thing that I focused on adding in. <laughs> this music's so perfect. L.A. Noir soundtrack is like one of the best soundtracks ever made for a game. So after another almost fatal crash, <sighs> <laughs> Please say I saved it. Dude, as soon as I added a transition, it just went. Oh my god, that's a huge crash report. A whole lot more cutting, retiming, green screening, masking, adding sound effects, and being an absolute idiot. Bish! I had finished the video. High five. Come on, Jack. Put it there. It had been a long three days. It's done. I was mentally drained. I get the job done. Ooh, too slow, too slow. And at the end of it, I'd made something that even my boy Kirky D would be proud of. Don't recall while I pee. They say I'm a rogue agent, that I can't be trusted, that I'm not like them. And they're right, I'm not like them. I get the job done. I called you an hour ago, detective. I had to think. That's where you always go wrong. You think too much. Now stop thinking and listen. I got a case for you, detective. Nothing too hard. Maybe even easy for someone like you. There's a good for nothing street fin selling juice outside Takumi Club. I need you to bring him in. But this time, detective, don't step out of line. Don't step out of line. Why would he assign me to this case if he didn't want someone who steps out of line? There's something wrong here. He's up to something. Go on, get out of here. You think you could set me up that easy? You know I'm a line stepper, and you put me on this case? What the hell are you talking about? You want me to step out of line. Then why would I want that? You're sending me to the most dangerous club in town. To what? Have me killed? You've been drinking, detective? I'm the most sober I've ever been in my entire life. And I wasn't born yesterday. you not to think. They say I'm a rogue agent, that I can't be trusted, that I'm not like them. And they're right. I'm not like them. I get the job done. Well, that was a long three days. There's a few things that I would have done differently, come to think of it. First thing would have been not using that software. It's a tricky software to use. Yes, it does live up to its reputation as one of the hardest softwares. 
Um, it's definitely one of the hardest softwares I've ever used. It was completely held back by its color space management, not being able to control how light and dark the image was. For us YouTubers, it's not gonna be very useful. I, I really tried finding the secret treasure underneath, but it's not there. You're just gonna get a lot more out of something like Premiere Pro or DaVinci that are made with YouTubers in mind. I made a version of this film in Premiere. Uh, it's a lot, a lot, a lot better. And it's on my new channel called Finiverse, where I'm uploading all of the comedy sketches that I've made in my previous years on this channel that aren't up here anymore. They're over there now. So go check it out. Now let's hit it, hit it. <laughs> what am I fucking saying? Because don't be with it. Let's do a nice classic get out of here. Get out of here. Give me the LA Noir soundtrack. Black and white, letterbox. Get out of here. Subscribe. Oh, I don't feel so good now.